May 29th, Daily Video Bible Reading from the Net Bible, Romans chapter 11 from the New Testament. So I ask, God has not rejected his people, has he? Absolutely not. For I too am an Israelite, a descendant of Abraham from the tribe of Benjamin. God has not rejected his people whom he foreknew. Do you not know what the scripture says about Elijah, how he pleads with God against Israel? Lord, they have killed your prophets. They have demolished your altars. I alone am left and they are seeking my life. But what was the divine response to him? I have kept for myself 7,000 people who have not bent the knee to Baal. So in the same way at the present time, there is a remnant chosen by grace. And if it is by grace, it is no longer by works. Otherwise, grace would no longer be grace. What then? Israel failed to obtain what it was diligently seeking, but the elect obtained it. The rest were hardened, as it is written. God gave them a spirit of stupor, eyes that would not see and ears that would not hear, to this very day. And David says, Let their table become a snare and trap, a stumbling block and a retribution for them. Let their eyes be darkened so that they may not see, and make their backs bend continually. I ask then, they did not stumble into an irrevocable fall, did they? Absolutely not. But by their transgression, salvation has come to the Gentiles to make Israel jealous. Now, if their transgression means riches for the world, and their defeat means riches for the Gentiles, how much more will their full restoration bring? Now I am speaking to you, Gentiles. Seeing that I am an apostle to the Gentiles, I magnify my ministry. If somehow I can provoke my people to jealousy and save some of them? For if their rejection is the reconciliation of the world, what will their acceptance be but life from the dead? If the first portion of the dough offered is holy, then the whole batch is holy. And if the root is holy, so too are the branches. Now if some of the branches were broken off, and you, a wild olive shoot, were grafted in among them and participated in the richness of the olive root, do not boast over the branches. But if you boast, remember that you do not support the root, but the root supports you. Then you will say the branches were broken off so that I could be grafted in. Granted, they were broken off because of their unbelief, but you stand by faith. Do not be arrogant, but fear. For if God did not spare the natural branches, perhaps he will not spare you. Notice, therefore, the kindness and harshness of God, harshness towards those who have fallen, but God's kindness towards you. Provided you continue in his kindness, otherwise you also will be cut off. And even they, if they do not continue in their unbelief, will be grafted in, for God is able to graft them in again. For if you were cut off from what is by nature a wild olive tree and grafted, contrary to nature, into a cultivated olive tree, how much more will these natural branches be grafted back into their own olive tree? For I do not want you to be ignorant of this mystery, brothers and sisters, so that you may not be conceited. A partial hardening has happened to Israel until the full number of the Gentiles has come in. And so all Israel will be saved as it is written. The deliverer will come out of Zion. He will remove ungodliness from Jacob. And this is my covenant with them when I take away their sins. In regard to the gospel, they are enemies for your sake. But in regard to election, they are dearly loved for the sake of the fathers. For the gifts and the call of God are irrevocable. Just as you were formerly disobedient to God, but have now received mercy due to their disobedience. So they too have now been disobedient in order that, by the mercy shown to you, they too may now receive mercy. For God has consigned all people to disobedience, so that he may show mercy to them all. O oh, the depth of the riches and wisdom and knowledge of God! How unsearchable are his judgments and how fathomless his ways! For who has known the mind of the Lord, or who has been his counselor, or who has first given to God, that God needs to repay him? 
For from him and through him and to him are all things. To him be glory forever. Amen. God, I seem to be having this conversation a lot lately about grace. (laughs) About, it's all about you. It's not about us. John 3.30 just permeates my life. Probably because for so much of my entire life, it was exactly opposite in my world. It was all about Chanel. God kind of came 32nd on the list. And it is only by grace that I sit here today having the honor of reading your word out loud so that other people can hear what you have to say, God. It is by nothing that I did. In fact, if we base it upon things I did, I definitely don't deserve to be sitting here right now. It's definitely not on anything of my own choosing. It is only by your grace. That is only equal in astonishing depth to the love you have for us. My favorite section of this chapter is, So in the same way, at the present time, there is a remnant chosen by grace. And if it is by grace, it is no longer by works. Otherwise, grace would no longer be grace. See, grace shows your sovereignty, God. It shows that we deserve nothing. Well, we deserve fire and brimstone and a few other things, but we deserve none of all the amazing blessings you give us. None. And there's nothing we can do to earn those. Your divine nature allows you to love us for who you truly made us to be. You show us grace because of that love. I still haven't figured out why you show us mercy. Good thing I'm not God. (laughs) Grace would no longer be grace. Because then it would just be up to us, God. And holy cow, even with you here, we make a big mess of everything. I can't imagine if you removed your grace from us. That scares me so much. It is only by your grace. It is only by your choosing that I am yours. It is nothing I did. It is nothing I didn't do. There is nothing I can do. But it is by your grace that you have chosen me. It is by your grace that you have chosen others. And whether I am a new olive branch or a time-tested olive branch, heck, I'll even be the, the fertilizer around the, the olive tree. It doesn't matter to me, God. Because you've chosen me. And because I understand finally that relationship that it's all about you and it's so not about me now you can use me now not all the time but a lot of the time I'm in a place of humbleness you are in control I don't know how I ever thought I was in control I was out of control God, it is your grace. It is your grace that allows us here every day. It is your grace that allows us to be overwhelmingly blessed with all that we have. It is by your grace that we receive forgiveness. And it is by your grace that we get to spend eternity with you. 
And God, if there are people listening to this video right now who don't understand what I'm talking about, about grace, and they want to know, God, I just pray that they hold out your, their hand to you. And they ask you to just show them. God, I believe in you. God, I believe in your son, Jesus Christ. God, I know he went to the cross for me and my sins. And now he's back up in heaven with you. But I don't know how all that works together. And I don't know what grace is. And as it stands today, I'm pretty important. Sound familiar? It was a conversation you and I had about 10 years ago. God, I just pray that they will start that conversation with you because I know not only will you answer them, but you will give them peace and joy and forgiveness and mercy and most of all grace. Because you chose us. You chose us. I'm not sure why. But you did. In your son's name I pray. Amen.